In this learning objective, we explain how an exchange traded fund is created and discuss both the benefits and detriments of investing in an ETF. So ETFs can be considered to be akin to a open-ended passive managed fund. This is because they uh, invest in a basket of securities that they tend to hold passively across time and this basket of securities tends to track the performance of some pre-specified index such as the market return. And they're open-ended because the number of units may increase or decrease in response to supply and demand. However, exchange traded funds differ from managed funds in the way they're constructed and because they trade on an exchange in much the same way as a stock. Now, exchange traded funds uh, have grown tremendously in popularity across time and they now cover a wide range of assets including equities, debt securities, currencies and commodities. So in terms of the growth of exchange traded funds, what's interesting to note that in terms of financial markets, these are relatively new, a relatively new phenomena. The first ETF was actually introduced in the United States in 1993, so only 25 years ago, um, and it was an ETF on the Standard & Poor's 500 index. So this uh, ETF is known as the SPIDER, uh, an abbreviation because of the abbreviation Standard & Poor's Depository Receipt. And what's interesting to note is that this SPIDER ETF, which still trades on the New York Stock Exchange today, is actually the highest dollar value of any security traded on the US market. So there are more spider ETFs traded on the US stock market on any given day than the amount of stock traded in any of the largest uh, American companies uh, that you can think of. So this really shows the economic importance of exchange traded funds, uh, the spider being just one example of a large number of ETFs that exist. Worldwide, there's been a huge growth in ETFs, uh, market capitalization of $2 trillion uh, and growing since, and about half of the total market capitalization is in the US. So ETFs are now so large that they comprise about a tenth of the market uh, capitalization of mutual funds, which is phenomenal given they basically didn't exist 25 years ago. And they represent about a third of all trading on US exchanges. Now, ETFs don't just exist in the, in the US though, uh, they do exist in the Australian market whereby there's about 60 exchange traded funds um, with a market capitalization of around $5 billion. So they're also very large in the context of, uh, of the market here in Australia as well. And we can really see if we track uh, the, the US ETFs across time, the growth in both the number of ETFs, which is the red line, and the assets under management of ETFs, there's been this exponential growth over, the, uh, over the, the, the recent history. Here we're just tracking the decade from 2000 to 2010. So what are the exchange traded funds uh, that are available on the Australian Securities Exchange? Well, there are exchange traded funds available on uh, the equity market, so uh, the, the Stenpoor's ASX 200 Index and the, Rus uh, and the Russell Australian Government Bonds both have ETFs over them. There are also ETFs over various international stock markets, commodities and currencies. So ETFs provide a very effective way for investors to get exposure to a range of different asset classes without some of the problems associated with investing in those asset classes, uh, such as issues around liquidity and so forth. So with respect to exchange traded funds, uh, it's important to note that the way that they're constructed is that you'll have uh, an investor, some sort of sponsor, who will invest in the basket of, uh, of assets. Uh, those assets will be pulled together and they'll then uh, be securitized by a broker whereby there'll be uh, a number of different uh, akin to units that are created over the portfolio. But what's different is that that basket of assets, the portfolio, is then effectively listed on a stock market in much the same way that a firm lists on the stock market and each of the shares in the ETF uh, are like shares in a stock. Uh, so you've got a pro rata entitlement to that particular portfolio. So it's because of this uh, feature of ETFs being listed that we get the key benefit of exchange traded funds is their liquidity. So unlike a managed fund whereby if you want to redeem units, you have to do so at net asset value at the end of every day, uh, the nature of ETFs is such that uh, basically, you just need to facilitate the trade on the stock market and the high, uh, high volume of trading in ETFs means that that can be generally executed almost instantaneously. 
A further benefit is the fact that ETFs are quite passive and hence incur very low management fees. Hence the fees of ETFs are significantly lower than those we see for managed funds. ETFs are also able to track benchmarks very closely, uh, so we have low tracking error. This is beneficial because it uh, enables investors to get uh, exposure to particular indices that they're interested in uh, without exposure to unsystematic risk factors. Uh, ETFs are also transparent. They'll clearly disclose the holdings and uh, generally the, the holdings will be related to the particular index that they're trying to track. Uh, and there can, be, there can also be taxation benefits. Now one final point to note that's important about ETFs is because they are traded on the market just like a normal stock, uh, they can be invested in much the same way as a stock can be invested. So that means that ETFs can be short sold. So if an investor wants a short exposure to an entire market, they can do that by shorting an exchange traded fund. ETFs can also be bought and sold on margin, so you can get leverage benefits uh, by using margin, much like we've seen from stocks previously. However, like any investment, there are some negatives that need to be considered. Uh, first of all, because exchange traded funds do trade on a market, uh, there are some additional hidden costs that need to be considered. Uh, the most predominant of those are the same transaction costs as what we see for stocks. Uh, they are costs associated with bid-ask spreads and potentially price impact, although the magnitude of most ETFs means that price impact doesn't tend to be a big deal. There might also be additional internal transaction costs that are applicable. Another potential negative for exchange traded funds is that dividends are not automatically reinvested, uh, which is uh, the case for most mutual funds. And depending on an investor's tax situation or depending on their preferences for regular cash flows, this could be a detriment because you could have investors who prefer uh, the constant reinvestment across time. And there can be additional risk for some ETFs. So some ETFs um, are synthetic. And uh, when we talk about a synthetic ETF, we mean that instead of holding the actual underlying, often what they'll do is they'll hold uh, some form of derivative contract. And in this case, uh, the ETF itself is exposed um, to counterparty risk. Um, because the, the, the derivatives themselves are a transaction with another party, that other party might default on the transaction, and that default would then have a downstream effect on the ETF unit holder. Finally, some people who believe that markets are not perfectly efficient might argue that a further problem with an ETF is the fact that it trades on the market like a stock. Hence, just like a stock, its value would be determined not only by the fundamental value of the underlying portfolio, but also by investor beliefs and factors that might affect supply and demand. This potentially could add additional layer of risk above the risk uh, of the underlying portfolio that's, that's held. Finally, it's important to consider some of the differences between exchange traded funds and mutual funds or managed funds. So first of all, uh, because ETFs trade on an exchange, uh, they're subject to trade commissions like a stock. So brokerage fees, bid ask spreads, etc., are going to be applicable here, where often they won't for managed funds, although different fees will be applicable. But because managed funds don't trade in this way, they don't have these particular costs. A big difference, and this is a really important difference for retail investors, is that managed funds usually require a very large initial investment. So they have min minimum capital upfront requirements. Um, and you can only buy more of the fund at certain minimum additional fines as well. Whereas with an exchange traded fund, you could just buy a, a single uh, share in the ETF uh, and the single share would just be like a, buying a single stock in the market. So uh, smaller lots can be purchased by retail investors, so they're accessible to a greater range of market participants. And mutual funds are sold by the fund company, whereby ETFs, once they're created, trading takes place in a secondary market, so they're sold by those participants within the market, which is another key difference between the two.